but it was an amazing time. It, we don't have to have a church full. It doesn't have to be the official time of worship. But God showed up on Tuesday. The Holy Spirit was moving, and it was amazing. It was sweet. I think there was five of us here, and we were a lot longer than what we expected to be. Somebody had to wait to be able to drive, I think. And it wasn't Roger and Sandy, okay? It was amazing. Please join us if, you, if it fits in your schedule. Amen. Amen. You know, it's getting to be the busiest time of the year, isn't it? Everybody's looking at what's ahead of them and thinking about what all am I going to be able to get done right and the closer it gets to the holiday our thinking shifts to is there a shortcut I can take <laughs> right I mean that's the reality of it isn't it it's what we all do but don't forget that you can find peace in God a peace that will get you through the holidays all those presents are nice and I know all the kids are sitting here going uh, no but you know it's not about that it's not I remember when we had Robert and I have nine grandkids and when they were all small you couldn't kick your way through the living room on Christmas for the paper. It was knee deep, literally. You'd have three people with trash bags trying to keep the trash picked up. But that's not what it's about. Don't lose sight of the season. Don't. Everything you need to get you through the holidays, Jesus gives you free of charge. You don't need your debit card. You sure don't need your charge card. He doesn't need anything but your love, your praise, and your worship. And you know, no matter how, it, it seems like depression sets in for some this time of year. But you can fight any level of depression with God. He knocks it clean out of the park. It won't matter. But remember him when things get tough for you this season. It's the greatest season of the year. It's awesome. Right? It is. It's amazing. The wonder that is in a child's eye on Christmas. Knowing that they believe in something. I have the word believe on so many places in my house. I was looking <laughs> the other day and I got tickled that if you walk in my house and don't know that I believe in something, something's wrong. You can't read. But those kids, you can still put the wonder in their eye, but leave Jesus in your story. Amen? Amen. Guys, I know I told you we weren't going to do this, but we're going to do the offering the old way this morning. That changed in midstream. So if two of you will come up, please. We do have a lot of people here today. And we want to thank each and every one of our visitors today for coming and joining us. We've got something special going on after serv regular service. And I think a lot of you are here for that. Thank you for coming. The side thing is, I hope something that's said or done blesses your heart. And maybe you want to come back. Amen? Because we'll welcome you anytime.
Everybody stand up. Let's all say the Lord's Prayer this morning in unison, please. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine art the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Let's praise God today. Marty, Angela, y'all come here. Jerry. Frank, y'all come on up here.
you got to start off real low like this right here. Ready, set, tell your neighbor. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Little bit louder now. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Louder. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 to come from out of the blue that was God. Oh, that's God. He's the walk my darkest night. His spirit is descending with power and might. His love, it surrounds me and wraps my soul safe and tight. Oh, oh that's God. He made a way for eternal life. His son to die. What a great sacrifice. He nailed all my sins to the cross. Brother, that's God. Oh, that's God. He's walking. My darkest night. His spirit is descending. A power and might. His love, it surrounds me and wraps my 
my soul safe and tight. Oh, oh, that's God. He made a way for eternal life. Sent His Son to die. What a great sacrifice. He nailed all my sins to the cross. Brother, that's God. Yes, He nailed all my sins to the cross. Brother, that's can he do exceedingly and abundantly beyond three hero bulls were thrown into the fire because before the king they would not bow oh they said now listen king let it be known we serve a living god and we're not alone well i know my god can it to him ain't nothing to it I know we'll see you through a sweet victory Well, even when storms are raging He is the rock of ages I know that he is able, mighty is he Three marched around the walls of Jericho Because before the king they just like he worked for them, oh, he's working now. My God won't ever change, cause he has great power. Well, I know my God can do it to him, ain't nothing to it. I know we'll see it through, sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is a rock of ages. I know that he is able, mighty is he.
our visitors that are here this morning, you said, what we done got ourselves into. This is a place of worship. Hello, somebody. And our God is not dead. Our God is very much alive. And we come to worship him with everything that is within us. Hello. When I was living in sin, I raised teetotal hell. You hear me? Come on, church. Right or wrong. You went to the bar room, you went to the honky-tonk, you went to the country music concerts, and you screamed and yelled to the top of your lungs, you danced all night long, the bubba shot the jukebox, and you was drunk on something other than the Holy Ghost. So when I come to church on Sunday, I come to worship a living God that was God enough to pull me out of those places, to erase my past, to rewrite my name in the book of life, and to give me hope that lasts for tomorrow. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I felt that in my soul this morning. He's the reason I sing. He's the reason why I raise my head off the pillow every morning. He's a reason and, 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 and the, the ability that I have to go out into a world of sinners and share the light and the love of Jesus that they too may know the love of this Father that is undying. He is a God today. He's my God today. And even though the powers of hell may come against me on a daily basis, I know I know that greater is he that is within me than he that is within this world. The same power that raised the dead from the grave back in the days of Lazarus, we have that same power. We have that same ability. The power for a, a touch and, and a healing of an issue of blood, we have that same power. He said, I must go away. But I will not leave you comfortless. He said, when I go, I will send you the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Preacher, do I need the Holy Spirit to be a Christian? Honey, you need the Holy Spirit to go to Walmart. Especially on Black Friday. We need the Holy Spirit to be our conscience and our guide. To lead us, to feed us, and most of all, to shelter us. From the storms of this life. I'm glad that I'm sheltered safely in his arms. That's the wrong song. That's the wrong song. The devil tried to take that away from me. Why don't we come to church and act the way we act? Here's why. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in the path that I must try. I have no fear for my Jesus walks beside me. I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. So I tell the devil every morning, let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise, they don't worry me. Because I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. I know He walks with me, and not on earth can harm me. For I'm sheltered in. Listen, soon I shall hear a call from heaven's portals. Come home, my child, 
It's the last mile that you must trot. But listen, there's no pain. I'll just fall asleep. And then I'll wake in God's new heaven. And over there I'll be sheltered in the arms of God. Y'all sing with me this morning. So let the storms rage high and the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me for I'm sure to save within the arms of God. I know He walks with me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Oh, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see it was grace that taught my heart and grace my fears really how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed my chains are
Sun for bed to shine, oh my God, my God. but God will call me here below. Will be forever mine. Will be. to listen to the words of this song. I dedicate this to all of you this morning. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carry the cross love so amazing love so amazing jesus messiah name above all Jesus. 
Jesus Messiah, the Lord of all. Jesus Messiah, the Lord of all. something this morning you know on the way to church this morning I was coming down the road and uh, me and my wife was talking she said I wish you felt a good as good at home as you felt as good as you do when you go to church and I can tell you <coughs> well I can have a better time in church because the devil can only run me as far as the house of God. At this moment in time, I don't have to think about the cancer that I'm fighting, that they say that's going to take me out. I don't have to think about none of that. The only thing that I have to think about is glorifying and praising my God. Because you know what? He has never one time let me down in all my years of my ministry. And all the 23 years that he gave me to pastor the same church. I praise God that my wife was there every step of the way with me. And you know what? She still pushes me even while I'm yet standing up here. I'm not up here by myself. She's up here with me. And I want to say I go to the, one of the best churches that anybody could ever be affiliated with. I got the best pastor that a man could ever ask for. He, uh, he's an inspiration. He motivates me. And I know that I was sitting here to push him, but sometimes I think it's him pushing me through this. But let me tell you something, y'all. I'm not looking to go by the way of the grave. I'm looking to go in the rapture. I believe that we're the generation that's going to see God. Whenever you look at what's happening over in Israel and you look at what's happening over in the Middle East right now, y'all, just know Gabriel's licking his lips. He's just waiting. God's just waiting on telling his son, Jesus, it's time to go get your bride. And you know, I heard all my life that it was the trumpet that was going to call us up out of this ground that was going to be buried in if we went by the way of the grave. But it's whenever Jesus Christ himself steps out on that cloud of glory, the Bible says he's going to step out with a shout. And whenever that shout rains out all over this world, that's what's going to get me to my attention. I'll be standing straight up waiting on what's happening next. Then the Bible says that in that moment, the Bible says that Gabriel's going to blow that trumpet. And the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first, us and the bride and the man shall be called up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And you know what? I'm not trying to be uh, uh, nobody uh, to set any dates or any times or anything like that because no man knows the date, the time, and hour. But God himself has got a time picked out. He's got 
the place picked out. Whenever the last word of comes out of your mouth, my mouth, the last word that's going to be preached from our pastor, whatever pastor, uh, throughout this land, whenever they preach and all is done, then we're going home as his bride. And that's the one that I'm looking for. And you know what? Oh, what a day that's going to be. Amen. Y'all listen to the name of this song as we begin to sing. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. stands and time is in his hands the beginning and the end the beginning and the end the God is three and one the Father Spirit and the Son the Lion and the Lamb
How great is our God. You know, when the psalmist David wrote the 23rd Psalms, he said, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He had a reason to brag on his God. Now, if you guys went to a good doctor, a great doctor, how many has a good doctor that you go to on a regular basis? And you fully trust in that doctor, his ability to practice, hello somebody, practice medicine, they call it a practice for a reason. Practice medicine to diagnose your symptoms and give you the proper medication or therapy that you may need. You would go out and tell everybody, man, I got this great doctor. And he always does for me what I need. Hello, somebody. He knows, he knows what's wrong with me when I walk in the door. He knows what I need. When I sit down on that table, he understands where I'm coming from and where I've been. Does that sound familiar? We serve a great physician. Our God, he is great. He knows what we need even before we admit what we need. He knows how to help us no matter what condition or situation that we might be in. He knows exactly how to heal us, how to treat us, how to give us our next day. So why wouldn't you want to tell somebody about this great physician? Hello? Maybe you've had somebody special in your life that came by and just done an act of random kindness for you. They might have fed you when you was hungry. Might have brought you some clothes when... You didn't have what you needed to wear. Might, might have picked you up and took you someplace that you needed to go. And for that, we gather around our friends and we say, Man, I got to tell you about this dude because, because I was hungry and he fed me. I got to tell you just how good this guy is because I didn't have anything to wear, but yet and still he brought clothes and he put them on me. Hello, somebody. I, I was I was needing I was I was lost I didn't know where I was headed and and I, I needed to get someplace that I, I I didn't even know where I needed to be but this guy came in and he told me exactly where I needed to go and he took me there and I gotta tell you about this guy his name's Jesus I think he's worthy of our praise that's why when we come in the house of God we we stand in the aisles and we, we dance and we sing and we clap our hands and we shout praises into his name. How many of you have ever watched the Christmas story? My trusty Red Rider BB gun with a compass in the stock and this thing which tells time. That's Ralphie. I want to dedicate this sermon to Paula Rogers because the next word that's going to come out of my mouth is very fitting. Squirrel. Squirrel. I have an infestation of squirrels at my house. Hello? All summer long, they have raided my bird feeders. They have broken my bird feeders they have cost me much money in refilling my bird feeders they have gotten into the box and on my building and they've run up and down i can hear them when i'm out there in the shed in my, in my workshop i can hear them running the box and then i know that they're in there and i'd be like i know you in there they have uh at times eaten uh wiring on lawnmower harnesses hello somebody my dad had one that ate the stuffing completely out of his seat on his lawnmower. I have uh, two pecan trees in my yard, Brother James. I thought about you when I was preparing the sermon today. I have those paper-shelled pecans that are oh so good. 
but because of the infestation of squirrels in my yard, I don't get very many pecans off the ground. Hello, somebody. They have really made a nuisance out of their self. So I have taken upon myself to eradicate the problem with my trusty Red Rider BB gun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Deer hunters will tell you that while they're sitting in the stand during the winter time and they're watching for that trophy buck to come along that a squirrel in a bush behind them can make them have a heart attack. Very true. So squirrels have proven themselves to be a problem. Are you with me? Because they, they eat up my pecan harvest. They, they are really a rat of a tree. That's a, a bushy-tailed rat in a tree. And for that reason, they all must die. I've been doing a pretty good job at thinning out the herd down at the house. I walk out the door with my trusty Red Rider BB gun with the compass in the stock and thing which tells time. And I'll cock that thing up. Are you going to shoot it? No. Ain't no BBs in it, though. I done shot them all out. But I'll get that squirrel dead in my sights, and I'll be like, one, two, three. Squirrel be gone. Another victim falls to the Red Rider BB gun, and some of y'all looking at me passing judgment right now. Hang on a minute. It's going to get real. Thanksgiving morning, I, I walked out my back door, and I was headed out to the the porch on my shed where my, my grill and my smoker and all those things are and I was going to smoke our turkey for Thanksgiving and as I walked out that door Thanksgiving morning I saw a squirrel perched on the, the holder for my bird feeder and instantly my mind said kill him and I said yeah he might be the one been eating my pecans this morning. Hello, somebody. He is guilty even before his trial. And when I get the sights of my Red Rider BB gun on that joker, I'm going to take him out. For he has committed a wrong. And he must die. So I reach back for the handle of my storm door. And the Spirit of God said, let him live. And I said, wait a minute. He's out here. He, he's a tyrant. He, he's been one that's been guilty. He's been one that's been eating my pecans. He's tore up a bird feeder. That's the one I've been looking for. How do you know they all look alike? But he fit the profile. He was a fuzzy-tailed rat of the tree and I'm pretty sure I've seen this joker before he made himself right at home perched on top of my bird feeder holder and so I was going to kill him but God said let him live it's Thanksgiving day and everybody gets to eat a buffet on Thanksgiving day and I said okay God for you I'll let him live he was pardoned on Thanksgiving Day. Let's look at the Bible. In the book of Romans, chapter number 3. Starting in verse number 10. Y'all stay sitting down. This is going to be a minute. I appreciate your respect to the Word of God. But let's just, let's just take this one verse at a time for a minute. It is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Do y'all understand what that is saying? Nobody is perfect. Nobody. I, I stand before you today and, and I'm bringing you this message as the pastor of this church and I will tell you that I am not perfect. Amen. Probably far from it to be honest with you because there's things every day that I should do that I don't do. And there's things that I should not do but I do. And because of that, I have done wrong. Hello, somebody. 
I have two dogs at home, Lucky and Diesel. Lucky is a one-year-old Dalmatian, and Diesel is a two-year-old pit bull. And those jokers get on my aggravating last nerve sometimes. Heather wants me to get rid of them. She really does. She hates my dogs, except for when she's cold, and she can get Diesel to sit on her lap and keep her warm. But when they get to acting up, I'll, I got these shock collars, and I'll, I'll go get those collars out, and I'll put them on my dogs. And do you know those dogs know when they have those collars on because they are a different creature. They, they almost instantly begin to behave because they know what the repercussions of their disobedience is. Hello? That, that means they know to do right, but they don't do it unless they have those collars on. And then they know how to walk the walk and how to talk the talk. I never realized how those dogs felt until a week ago when they put a camera in my service truck that is GPS coordinated. It can tell you if I run a stop sign. It can tell you if I break the speed limit. It can tell you if I yawn, because if you're sleepy driving, that's a, that's a mark. Hello, somebody. It's got a camera that faces forward and a camera that faces back. And so sometimes, just for fun, I'll go down the road like this right here. Just so that I do. Because I want to know if they're watching. Hello, somebody. The other day, I pulled up at the fire department, and there's this big oak tree there. And that camera picks up if you hard brake. So I pulled up real slow toward that oak tree, and then I jammed the brake like that so the camera would come on, and they thought I hit the oak tree. <laughs> Amen. That's just some fun I have with the camera. But I know that there's always somebody now watching. And there's repercussions. I now know what my dogs feel like when I have that collar around their neck. I know that if I mess up, that somebody's watching, and I'll face the repercussions of what my behavior is. Hello? Kind of sounds familiar, don't, don't it? The Holy Spirit of God is an ever-present thing. It is very present. And it's, it's with us every day of our life, and it's always watching. He's always watching. He, he, he knows what we need before we need it. He, he knows what we've done before we do it. He knows our thoughts. He knows our words. He knows our intentions. He knows our hearts. And because of that, we need to be careful. We need to have respect for the Holy Spirit of God. And not take him anywhere he don't want to be. Not do what he don't want us to do. To act according to what his word says. Because there is none righteous. No, not one. Verse 11. I'll try to hurry. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. That kind of sounds like the day and age of what we're living in. People are seeking after so many things and as other things than the Spirit of God. People are, are looking for answers, but they're looking for answers in all the wrong places. They're, they're looking at Google. They're looking in science. They're looking in politics. They're looking in drugs. They're looking in alcohol. They're looking in everything except for the place that holds all the answers. They want to know what's going on in the, in the world today. If you open up the Bible, you will see what's going on in the world today. I've never seen a time when the headline news coordinate with the Bible the way that it's doing in this day and in this age. We can almost take the newspaper and lay it down beside the King James Bible and read the headline news and see where the timeline is playing out right before our very eyes. We are living in biblical prophecy times. And you know what the end is going to be? The end is going to be that the church will be raptured out. It could be just any day now. And you say, well, preacher, I, I'm not ready to go. Here is your warning. If you've not been warned until today, today is your warning. Jesus 
is coming again. And it will be very soon. Nobody's seeking after God. They've all gone out of the way. They're all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, not one. Our best is as of filthy rags in the sight of God. There'll be people that'll stand before Jesus on the, on the day of judgment and they'll say, well, Lord, did I not tell people about you? Did, did, I, did I not go to church on Sunday? Did, did I not carry a Bible under my arm? Everywhere that I went, I sang in the choir. I sat on the deacon board. I taught in the Sunday school class. All these things I've done for you. And God's going to look at those people and say, depart from me. You worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Your good deed doing is not going to hold a bucket of water when it stands before the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only by the blood of Jesus, a personal relationship, and salvation from your sins. Talking to a Jehovah Witness the other day, and I said, I'm thankful for the saving grace of God. And they said, what did he save you from? I said, he saved me from myself. I had a self-destruct button and I was pushing it every day living a life of sin but the grace of God it came down from heaven above and it sat down upon me and it saved me from my sins it gave me grace it gave me faith it gave me hope and it gave me a place to go when I leave this world For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We can't do enough good to get to heaven. We can't buy a ticket. We can't give to the homeless. We can't feed the poor. There's nothing that we can do that's going to assure our righteousness and get us into heaven. Only one thing. The blood of Jesus. It's the only thing that will guarantee your salvation and a home in heaven one day. And if you don't ask Jesus into your heart and you receive him, then guess what? You're not going to go. Verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. What is that? It's a grave. Their throat is an open grave and their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. 14. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness oh my lord we're living in a time where people have never carried so much bitterness in their heart That's right. and people will tell you off at the drop of a hat i'll probably get told off going there'll be somebody go out the door in a little bit and they'll tell me off because i'm shooting squirrels out the backyard but i'm feeding cats and dogs but we'll get so offended so easily and we carry that around and will not give have any forgiveness in our heart if you don't forgive people then you cannot be forgiven it's as simple as that when I was a little boy they, they always told me that when people died if they carry bitterness or alts in their heart that, that that when they died they wouldn't have any grass grow over their grave I can take you to Winget City Cemetery right now, and my grandpa, Walter Edward Johnson, is in that. Listen, he's been dead a long time, and there is still no grass growing on his grave. And I fully believe to this day, it's because of the alts and the bitterness he had in his heart when he left this world. And I can't prove that. It might just be a pH imbalance. In the, but my grandma's buried right beside of him, and grandma's got grass on her grave. Explain that to me. Explain that to me. We need to forgive. Freely you have received, freely give. Verse 15. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God. Now, now, now wait, 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 wait e-break that let me see if it's the same on your screen as it is on my screen oh yeah it's the same it's the same that is spelled with the big g hello so when it's spelled with a big g 
in the Bible, that means it's the big God. Our God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That, that's our God. There's no fear. No, listen, I'm not talking about Muhammad. I'm not talking about Buddha. I'm not talking about Joseph Smith. I'm talking about God. The God. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Parents, how many times have you went to whoop your kids? And in your mind, you got your mind made up, I'm going to put the fear of God in this joker right here. Hello? I'm going to put the fear of God in you, boy. I've heard that too many times. My daddy has, has grabbed me, Brother Willie, and whooped me in a circle so many times, and the whole time he's saying, I'm going to put the fear of God in you, boy. And I'm still afraid of God to this day. What do you mean, Brother Jeremy? Are, are, are we supposed to fear God? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he is the only one that can destroy both body and soul. That reason alone is why we should fear God. We need to have a respect for God that nobody else has. But do you have you seen how, how, how laid back and, and, and non-respectful that people that call themselves Christians are today? It's because they lost their fear of God. God can rain down judgment on you in a matter of seconds. Hear me now. Last Sunday night, we got called out uh, on a rescue call, and it was for an unconscious patient. Hello? I walk into the home, and there the young man sit to my left-hand side, and I reached in, and he was cold to touch. I, I looked at his hand, and there was pooling of blood in, in, his, in his extremities, which meant that the heart wasn't keeping it pumping. It had all went to the lower level. That means he had been that way for a little while. Hello? And so his mama looks at us and says, Can you fix him? Man, I couldn't fix this if I brought every tool in the box out. This, this young man is gone. There, there's nothing else that I can do for him. Nothing. And that woman said, So you're telling me that he's dead? And I said, Yes, ma'am. Beyond all doubt, this young man is deceased. And she looked up at the sky, and she shook her fist at God, and she said, D you, hello somebody, you took my son from me. I looked at her and I said, what do you want wrote on your tombstone? Because you're not going to sit there and shake your fist and cuss God and him not bring some kind of wrath upon you. Amen. Job's wife told him, why don't you just curse God and die? She knew that if he done that, if he crossed that deadline that God has set there, whenever you curse God, you will die. People have lost their fear of God. They don't respect God anymore. Mm. I might sound a little old-fashioned when I go out here. But we got some churches that look more like a rock concert than they do a church. Hello? I, I, <laughs> do I have to wear a suit to preach? I don't. I don't. But I do. Because I respect God and I respect His house. Two men that you always take your hat off for. The barber and God. Hello? Don't let me catch you with a ball cap on your head and you standing to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I will remove your hat and raise you a knot at the same time. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Amen? We need to have respect. And that's what's wrong with the country that we're living in. They have no respect anymore. They've lost it all. They don't respect their mother. They don't respect their father. They don't respect God. 
They don't respect any way, any, any power of authority. They have no respect for the police. They have no respect for firefighters or first responders. They, they have no respect for nobody. I went on a call yesterday, and the people wouldn't even let the paramedic treat the patient because they said, she don't need no paramedic. And the paramedic backed out. I bust up in the house. I said, which one of y'all I'm slapping first? Hello? That woman needs help, and you're not going to stand in the way. I walk in the house of God this morning, and I looked at the devil, and I said, I'm going to go ahead and slap you right now. Because there's people in this house that need some help today. And I'm not going to let Satan stand in my way. Amen. Just go ahead and raise a pop knot on his head from the word go. Right. Brother Roger was in here praying this morning, and I heard him say to break down the walls of tradition, to yeah. break down depression, to break down the chains that are holding people captive. Yeah. Go ahead and give the devil a black eye right yeah. now and tell him that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Yeah. Respect God today. Verse 19. I'm, get, I'm getting ready to finish up here. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. Hello? Amen. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. We're all guilty. We don't even have to stay in trial. We're, we're guilty. Have you ever had somebody that you knew was guilty when they walked in the courtroom? Why? They had guilt wrote all over their face. They didn't care. They smirked when they took their mug shot. They knew that some lawyer had them out in about, about another couple of hours. That they get a slap on the back of the hand and tell them not to do it anymore. I, Brother Jeremy, what, what are you saying? We need to. Uh, uh, <laughs> I believe in corporal punishment. I believe in an eye for an eye. If that man is guilty of murder, then let him die the way that he killed. Bring back the news. It's an eye for an eye. I think we need to expedite the judicial system. There's too many people that are living life sentences. Hello? We're guilty of our sin. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh be justified in the sight for by the law it is knowledge of sin but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested hello somebody be thankful being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Paul's right there. Don't go, don't go to 24 yet. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. According to the law of Moses, when somebody broke the law, they were stoned to death. No questions asked. On sight, they were, they were found guilty of their sin. There was no due diligence in the courtroom. There was no uh, procedure of, of a hearing. They were, when they were guilty, they knew they were guilty, and they were put to death. Right. Yeah. Kind of like my Red Rider BB gun, shooting the squirrels. I didn't really see that squirrel eating a pecan, but he was guilty by association because he was a squirrel. Hello? That means that all of us in this house would be stoned to death because we're guilty by association. We are flesh. We're flesh. And because we have flesh and we have blood and we have a mind and a will of our own, hello, somebody, we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all of you are hereby sentenced to death. Judge has ruled. Everybody line up so I can shoot you my BB gun. Well, that kind of got quiet, didn't it? Let's look at verse 24 now. Being justified freely 
by His grace. <laughs> Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to be shouting rooftops over that verse right there. Glory to God. Because I, who was guilty in the trespasses of my sin, guilty by association because I am flesh, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. By the law of Moses, I deserve to be stoned to death. But by the grace of God, I have been justified and redeemed and washed and purchased by the blood of Jesus. I have a full-blown pardon. Jesus signed my pardon. So now it don't matter what the devil says about me. The grace of God is all around me. It has covered me. I am safe and secured, sheltered, by the arms of God. How about you today? If we stood in a courtroom and the judge turned our way, will we have the grace of God to plead our case? Or will we stand there on our own? Hello, somebody. Let me tell you how imperfect I am. I have stood before a judge in a court of law. I know it's hard to believe. I'm such a good guy. But we all have a past. We've all failed. We've all come short of the glories of God. I stood before that judge and the judge turned my way and said how do you plead? Please, 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 please. Think that worked? No. I thought about throwing myself on the mercy of the court. But on that day there was no mercy found in the court. He said, do you have counsel to represent you? I said, I have none. And because of that, I had to plead guilty. Hello? What would you plead guilty over? That is none of your business. Hello, somebody. It's forgiven, forgotten forever. But I want to tell you this. That I felt like an orphan. I was standing all by myself. And the judge and the jury was sitting there overlooking me, and I had nobody to help me, Brother Willie. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody come to rescue me. Nobody come to represent me. I was standing there on my own. There was another time in my life when I should have been executed should have been killed for my sins my wrongdoings the judge might have looked at me and said how do you plead and I said well I guess I'm going to have to plead guilty again but at that very moment that's when the mercy of God walked in I stood before that judge and the mercy of God walked in. And he said, Brother Jeremy, I'll plead your case. So then, between me and my judgment was the mercy of God. Hello, somebody. When judgment come my way, mercy spoke up and said, wait just a minute. He's mine. I bought him. Whatever he's done wrong, I'll take the blame. Whatever wrong he's done, that's on me. 
That's why he went to Calvary. He took my place. He died so I didn't have to. When judgment came, mercy walked in. Thank you, my brother. Aren't you glad today to know that all of your past is covered on the blood of Jesus? When you stand before the judgment bar of Christ, and it seems like you have no representation, that's when Jesus will walk into the scene. He'll say, this one's mine. I freely signed his pardon. He deserved to die. That squirrel deserved to die. But God said, pardon him. Pardon that squirrel today. Now I'm going to go home. My wife is going to make me unload the BB gun and start feeding the squirrels. Hello, somebody. Next time I go to reach for my Red Rider, Brother Jerry, my wife's going to look at me and say, Mercy won't bend and pleaded my case. Brought to the stand was God's saving grace. And I'll have to lay my BB rider, my Red Rider BB gun down. Just like Abraham when he laid his Isaac down. I just have to feed the squirrels and live in harmony with the earth, I guess, right? How many squirrels do we have in the church today? Paula raised her hand. Brother Tom raising his hand. You see, we're, we're all squirrels. We all deserve to die. Because of the wrong that we've done in our lives. And just because we're flesh. And we know by the scriptures that all flesh have sinned, come short of his glory. But how many of us is going to be like Squeaky? I gave him a name just now. Squeaky the squirrel. He got pardoned on Thanksgiving Day. He found grace. How about you? Would you like to be like Squeaky the Squirrel and be pardoned of your judgment and find the grace of God today? It's just that easy. It's just that simple. You see, you don't have to deserve it to get it. Hello? You don't have to be able to afford it to get it. You don't have to, you don't have to go back and undo the wrongs in your life to get it. All you have to do is be present and say, I want Jesus to be a part of my life. And mercy can walk in for you too. Mercy can take your place. Every head bowed.